Hello friends and family. Thank you for coming back to watch our videos at Come Sit at My Table. It is the middle of October, so it's fall. And in the fall, when I think of dessert, I think of peach cobbler. So tonight we're making a peach cobbler to have for dessert. I'm going to get started with the first step because it needs a few minutes and then we'll talk about the recipe. So the first thing that I'm going to do is spray my pan. Now notice that we're using an eight by eight baking dish. This is not a large nine by 13. This is a, a smaller eight by eight inch dish. So I'm going to spray it. And when you see what we're going to do next, you'll think, well, you probably didn't need to spray that. And the truth is I probably don't. But why take the chance on it? sticking. So I always spray it. Now the first thing you want to do after you spray your dish is add half a stick of butter. I'm just going to tell you my butter is really soft because we don't refrigerate our butter at our house. Our butter stays out on the countertop all the time. Now what we're not using of course stays in the refrigerator but we usually keep two to three sticks out on the counter all the time. So it's really soft, and I'll tell you why. I probably shouldn't even say this, but I absolutely hate going to restaurants, especially Cracker Barrel, where the butter is frozen and you can't spread it on your bread. Who wants a big hunk of frozen butter? So we keep our butter out on the counter, at least two sticks all the time. Sometimes we have three sticks out. And that keeps it soft and it spreads easily. So I put half a stick of butter in the bottom of the dish and I'm going to stick it in the oven just for a couple of minutes for that butter to melt. Now I could stick it in the microwave and let it melt that way, but the oven's already preheated to 350 degrees. So I thought, let's just go ahead and stick it in there. Now I showed you that we're using an eight by eight baking dish. You can, Make a larger one in a nine by 13. All you have to do is double the recipe. The recipe I'm going to give you now is for an eight by eight baking dish. But if you want a large cobbler, you can do it in a nine by 13 and just double the recipe that I'm going to give you. Now this recipe is one I have had for more years than I want to admit. I got this recipe from one of the best friends Melissa and I have ever had. Her name is Pat Brumley, and she will tell you that she cannot cook. She would tell you that she is the worst cook in the world. She, she doesn't know how to fix food. She doesn't know how to cook, and none of that is true. She's a great cook. She shared this recipe with me probably more than 30 years ago, a long time ago. It is a very easy, very simple um, cobbler recipe, and you can use pretty much any fruit you want to. I've done it with blueberries, I've done it with blackberries, but usually we do it with peaches, and that's what we're gonna do tonight. So here's how you make Pat's Peach Cobbler. By the way, some people call it cup of cobbler because you use a cup of flour, cup of sugar, cup of milk. It makes it real easy. A cup of flour, a cup of sugar, a cup of milk. So they call it a cup of cobbler. But it will forever be Pat's Cobbler in this house. Now the first thing we're going to use is one cup of self-rising flour. You have to use self-rising. If you use all-purpose, then it's not going to rise correctly. I guess you could use all-purpose, but then you'd have to add baking powder and baking soda and salt and whatever. If you use self-rising, all of that's already in your flour. You don't have to add anything else. So one cup of self-rising flour. Then one cup of just white granulated sugar. One cup of self-rising flour. One cup of white sugar. Now, I take a whisk and whisk those together just so that when you stir in the milk, it doesn't, the flour doesn't kind of clump up. If you get that sugar in there with it, it just makes it blend up a little easier. 
So we have a cup of flour, self-rising flour, cup of sugar, and we're going to add one cup of milk. And use whole milk. Don't use that nasty skim milk. It is nothing but colored water. Ugh. Get some good whole milk and use it. All right, so a cup of, cup of, cup of. Cup of self-rising flour, cup of white sugar, cup of milk. And just take a whisk or a spoon. I like a whisk, it just kind of blends it up a little faster, a little easier. Gets the lumps out. And by the way, you are gonna have some lumps in this. That's okay. It's all right to have lumps, they'll bake up. So, especially if you're using a spoon instead of a whisk, if you use a whisk, it's gonna get those lumps out. Now you can see the consistency. It's pretty runny. It's a lot thinner than, I don't know, a pancake batter or something. It's it's not like water, but it's, it's pretty thin, okay? Now, we're gonna put that in our pan in just a minute, but let me tell you, there's one other ingredient you need, and that is you need fruit. You should always use fruit that's in heavy syrup. I don't know if you can see this, Melissa, but right there it says yellow clean peaches in heavy syrup. You want that heavy syrup. That just means they've taken the peach juice and added sugar, so it's a sweet syrup that it's in. It's kind of like a sugar water, but it's got some of the peach juice in it. Um, and you want that for the sweetness in your cobbler. And I'll show you why in just a minute. Okay, let's see if our butter has melted. And guess what? It has. So we have our melted butter. Can you see that? We don't have to do anything to that. That's just, it's melted and that's fine. The next thing we're going to do is pour in our batter. Right in with that batter and we're not going to stir anything. We're just going to pour that batter in there. Yep, that butter's going to pool all over it. You know what? That just makes it good. I'm gonna lay that right there. And I'm going to scrape this out because we don't want to, you wanna come around on this side of me? We don't want, I'm left-handed, so it makes it hard to video what I'm doing. All right, we want all of that batter out of there. All right, now, you see how that butter has pulled on top of there? That's perfectly fine. Nothing in the world wrong with that. Now, here's the next step. We melted our butter, sprayed our pan, melted our butter, mixed our cup of cup of cup of, cup of self-rising flour, cup of sugar, cup of milk, poured that in on top of the butter. Now we're just going to take our peaches and scatter them right on top of that batter. Notice we've not stirred anything and we're not going to stir anything. We're just gonna take those peaches. And you know, I, I'll just tell you, usually I use sliced peaches, but I went to the pantry tonight to use what we had and we didn't have any sliced peaches tonight. We had chunks of peaches, and that doesn't matter at all. Chunk peaches work just as well as sliced ones, so that's what we're using. Let's get every one of them out of there. Notice that I am kind of draining these a little bit. We're not going to waste that heavy syrup. By the way, I'm using, the recipe calls for 29 ounce can of peaches. 
And normally I would have a 29 ounce can of sliced peaches, but tonight I did not. Instead, I have two 15 ounce cans of diced peaches. So I'm using about 30 ounces tonight, but the recipe calls for a 29 ounce can. So just use whatever you can get. The most important part is to use about 29, 30 ounces in heavy syrup. You want that heavy syrup. And I want them all the way around the edges so nobody gets cheated out of peaches. Want those all the way around the edges there. Here's two more. Now, you say, well, what are you gonna do with that heavy syrup? You said you weren't gonna waste it. Look what we're gonna do with it. We're gonna take that heavy syrup and we're going to pour it right on top. Just all over the top of that peach cobbler. There's one can. There's the other can. And you want to use the whole thing. Every drop of that heavy syrup needs to be used. That's it. Now we're going to bake it. You want to bake it in a preheated oven that's heated to 350 degrees and you're going to bake it for 50 minutes to start with check the top of it see if it looks done and you may have to add five or ten minutes probably not more than 10 more 50 to 60 minutes is plenty usually 50 minutes does it for us um, especially with our gas oven it bakes a little hot so I'll probably start checking it around 45 minutes and see if it's close to being done, but um, normally 50 to 60 minutes will do it. All right, we're gonna stick this in the oven and we will be back in about 45, 50 minutes and let you see what the finished cobbler looks like. And of course, have to have vanilla ice cream with peach cobbler. We'll see you in about an hour. Welcome back. The peach cobbler has been in the oven for exactly one hour. I started it at 45 minutes. It needed more time, so I added 10 minutes. I still didn't feel like the middle of it was completely done, so I added five more, so it's been in for exactly 60 minutes. Let's get it out and check it. Turn the oven off. I will tell you that after we turned off the video the last time, I did stick a pan under it because sometimes it will bubble over just a little and actually it did, just the hair. So it's probably a good thing that I did stick a a uh, cookie sheet under it. There you can see the peach cobbler. Now, what goes with peach cobbler? Vanilla ice cream. So, let's grab some vanilla ice cream. I don't know that there is such a thing as bad ice cream or a bad brand of ice cream. Melissa and I normally use two different brands. Sometimes we use Briar's Vanilla Bean. I'm gonna tell you, one of our favorite ice creams is a brand called Turkey Hill. It's just really good ice cream. Now, the vanilla is really good for something like this, <clears throat> but our favorite Turkey Hill ice cream is chocolate with peanut butter in it. It's daggone good. But for something like a dessert, like um, peach cobbler, you want just plain vanilla. So that's what we're having. All right, let's scoop up some and see what we think. Pat's Peach Cobbler. Mm. 
Now, of course, you know, the peach cobbler has the dough and all that juice that we put on top of it. So it is going to be a little gooey. It's a little gooey and sticky. Let me get my hand out of the way. You don't want it to be dry and, I don't know. You just want it to be moist and look at this, how gooey it is. Can you see that? That looks delicious. All right. Now, I need a couple spoons, a big spoon for my big mouth and a little spoon for mama's. And of course we need a nice scoop of vanilla ice cream. Let me tell you, this is good and frozen. There's a scoop. Good firm ice cream. And there's a scoop. There's a scoop for mama. How about one more, Melissa? You're not talking to me? Yeah, that sounds good. Looks good. Okay. Now ice cream on our peach cobbler. Now, it is really hot. But we have to have a bite. Wipe my hand off there. You want me to video you taking a bite? I do not. Okay. Thanks for offering. Ooh, it's hot. Actually, in my pajamas already. That's why I don't want to be on. <laughs> <laughs> that was not a nice question to ask me, actually. <laughs> she had already said, don't you dare put me on camera. Because she's already in her pajamas tonight. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Oh, that's good. Mm. You know, I guess, I don't know why you couldn't just eat peach cobbler year round. It's good enough you can have it any time. But there's just something about peach cobbler in the fall. It's just when it tastes the best to me. Wow. Pat's Peach Cobbler. You won't be sorry. We really do appreciate that you would come sit at our table. Come sit at my table. If you haven't, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell right next to it. And on the left side of your screen under the video, please click the thumbs up for us. We would appreciate it if you would do that. You're always welcome to come sit at my table. Thanks for watching.